cyber mercenaries are offering their services to hack for governments and private organizations, and no one is safe. America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Cyber Mercenaries. It sounds like a 90s internet movie where the characters talk about hacking the World Wide Web using virus worms. But no, like everything else in this stupid timeline, it's a real thing. Cyber Mercenaries essentially offer their hacking services to the highest bidders. They'll target anyone. And unfortunately, they're a lot better at interneting than most internet companies. That's the technical term. Look, my knowledge of how the internet works comes exclusively from 90s movies, which is why I keep all my data on floppy disks and travel around New York City on rollerblades. Cyber mercenaries are a big problem. Meta, the company formerly known as Facebook, just banned seven cyber mercenary companies that targeted 50,000 people. These cyber mercenary companies are based in places like India, Israel, Macedonia, and China. They were engaged in creating fake Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp accounts to spy on victims in at least 100 countries on behalf of shady clients. According to Facebook, sorry, Meta's statement, the targeting is in fact indiscriminate and includes journalists, dissidents, critics of authoritarian regimes, families of opposition, and human rights activists. For example, one of the companies banned is called Cytrox. Cytrox. Really? I guess I'm not the only one inspired by 90s internet movies. Look at their logo! How could you look more like a company that creates futuristic cyber dystopia? What's that, Shelley? Cytrox called their spyware Predator. Okay, I guess that's how. Cytrox has customers from all over the world. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Vietnam, the Philippines, even Germany. And it can hack into Apple's iOS. So much for Apple's what happens on your iPhone stays on your iPhone motto. Your iPhone is vulnerable to cyber mercenaries. That's what exiled Egyptian opposition activist and former Egyptian presidential candidate Amen Noor found out the hard way. He knew something was up when Egyptian and Arabic TV channels started to broadcast parts of his calls and publish his personal photos that had been obtained using Predator. He told the Daily Beast, the experience is violent in its psychological effects, and it is enough to say that I have completely stopped communicating with my children, my family, and my friends to protect them from any hazards. Violent in its psychological effects. So like using Instagram. Meta also removed 300 Facebook and Instagram accounts linked to an Israeli-based company called Black Cube. Really? Black Cube? Is there a cyber dystopia naming competition? Black Cube helped convicted sex offender Harvey Weinstein thwart reports of abuse by digging up dirt on his accusers and spying on journalists from The New Yorker and The New York Times. Wow. Who else are the clients of these scummy cyber mercenaries? Well, one of the companies Meta banned is called Cobwebs. It has a five-year contract with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. And that's the thing. Most of these companies describe what they do in pretty banal ways. They say things like, we offer governments operational cyber solutions, or we help businesses gather data from user devices and cloud services. But the reality is much darker. That's why the EU Cybersecurity Agency says hackers for hire are the biggest cybersecurity threat we face. Really? I thought the biggest cybersecurity threat was Cyber Ninjas. Another great 90s internet movie. But the seven companies Meta banned is just scratching the surface. It's just a tiny part of a much broader digital espionage economy. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. Cyber mercenaries, or hackers for hire, are a much bigger issue than just the handful of companies Meta banned. Even the U.S. government is funding these groups. The most notable one to date is NSO Group, 
a private company with roots to Israel's secretive cyber unit, Unit 8200. It's gained notoriety for its surveillance software, Pegasus. Finally, a company that didn't name its software like it's some 90s internet movie. Instead, it's an 80s hair metal band. Pegasus can collect emails, call records, social media posts, user passwords, contact lists, pictures, videos, sound recordings, and browsing histories. Of course, NSO Group says they only have the noblest aspirations. They say they only work for governments to spy on terrorists and criminals. You know, like New York Times journalists, or human rights advocates, and government dissidents. It's even managed to hack into U.S. State Department phones in Uganda. That is not the way. You see, companies like NSO Group don't disclose who is using their products or who their targets are. They skirt responsibility by saying the blame ultimately goes to the person using the tool. But Google researchers have found the capabilities NSO provides rival those previously thought to be accessible to only a handful of nation states. It's a weapon against which there is no defense, just like 80s hair metal. All this is very dangerous when authoritarian regimes or bad actors use NSO Group's tools to spy on civilians and crack down on dissidents, human rights advocates, and journalists. But cyber mercenaries may soon find it harder and harder to operate. I'll tell you why after the break. Welcome back. Companies and governments are beginning to crack down on cyber mercenaries. NSO Group has been sued by Facebook and Apple. And Apple, you know, unhackable Apple, wants to go further. Apple wants to block the company from using any Apple products, a move that would topple NSO's current business model. Last month, the U.S. Department of Commerce blacklisted NSO Group, along with three other companies. That means Americans can't share hardware or software with NSO Group without a license from the Commerce Department. All this means that NSO Group is now about $450 million in debt. According to Bloomberg, NSO Group is now considering shutting down the Pegasus unit, which makes up half of its profit, as well as possibly the company itself. And some members of Congress want to do more. In a letter to the heads of the Treasury and State Department, 18 members of Congress asked that NSO Group and three other surveillance companies be sanctioned for gross violations of internationally recognized human rights by providing technological support that enables human rights abuses. Just, you know, don't sanction the ones the U.S. is funding. Like Paragon, which sounds like both a cyber dystopian company from a 90s internet movie and an 80s hair metal band. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. And if you like this show, please know we could not do it without direct support from viewers like you. Visit patreon.com slash americauncovered and contribute a dollar or more per episode to help us keep the show going. So click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.